So how do you transition a patterned carpet to laminate flooring? In this video, I'm going to walk you right through that. So what's good? It's Carpet Mike here from CarpetExpertBlueprint.com, bringing you those tips and tricks to make you more successful in the carpet and flooring industry. Now we have a laminate flooring. It's oh so nice looking, even though I'm not a fan of laminates. We got a beautiful patterned carpet. Now we need to transition these two. So we took tack strip and we butt it directly up to the laminate flooring. Contrary to what most people would do, leaving that little bit of a gap and tucking it so it could just work itself loose down the road. But we butt the tack strip directly up to the laminate. Then we're doing a turn and tack right up to it. So we're going to stretch it up. We're going to put two security staples in it. And then we're going to fill in the blanks after that. Nice and easy and smooth. We're going to rinse and repeat this process till we get all the way across this 15 foot open doorway. But the reason we do it like this, it's going to wear better. It's going to hold up better. You're not going to get the little tack strips poking in your toes. It's not going to come loose. It's not going to shred. None of that. This is about as secure as it gets. And it's going to go ahead and even out the playing field as well. So we're going to do a turn and tack again. We're going to stretch it up with our kicker. We're going to take our electric stapler and we're just going to secure it right into that tack strip there. Now a couple tricks to keep this looking smooth and beautiful is when you're using your stapler and you're stapling it into the tack strip there. You want to make sure you're keeping them uniform in the sense that it's a straight line at the furthest point edge of the carpet. If you set them, you know, a half inch to an inch back from the edge of the laminate flooring, it's going to cause a divot and it's going to just look funky. But if you staple it right on the edge and you keep them uniform, you know, an inch apart on each one or whatever the consistency is, it's going to go ahead and look nice, uniform. It's going to flow and have a phenomenal finish as if I didn't have to oversell the carpet industry here. So we're just working our way all the way across. And then once it's done, you could stretch to the opposite wall, getting the room super nice and tight and no worries about restretching down the road. There's always going to be a restretch down the road. Fun fact. But real quick, let's go ahead and cover some of the tools you're going to use to make this happen. In case you're a DIY person, you love buying tools and you want to take on this project on your own, we got a concrete subfloor first off. So we're going to go ahead and use concrete tack strips. You could get those at any of the big box joints. And we're also using 5 ace concrete nails. Those are typically sold separately from the tack strip that you're going to buy in the big box stores because those tack strips come with an 11 16 nail. I think I might have said 5 16 on the last thing. Forget everything I just said. The tech strips you, <laughs> you buy in the big box stores there come with 11 16 nail. You're going to want some 5 ace nails. You could buy all those at the big box joints. Next, once you secure your tack strip with a hammer, you're going to need a hammer. You're going to go ahead and also need a kicker and an electric stapler. Now, these are also items you could get at the big box joints, but Amazon.com is all of our best friends in the marketplace there. So consider just shopping on there and having it dropped at your doorstep within that two day prime shipping goodness. So the tacker is going to run you just under $100. The kicker is going to be just under $100 as well. And then we just need a knife to cut it oh so nice. Now, depending upon what style of knife you like, it's going to be anywhere from 8 to $15 for a nice knife. And then the key to having a great cut is sharp blades. Do not lob your hand off when you're using these sharp blades. But a fresh blade after every cut will ensure your success because a dull blade just creates an absolute disaster for you that you don't want to have to deal with. So that's all you need for the tools there. All the places you can buy them at Lowe's, Home Depot, Amazon, Menards, wherever your go-to joint is for buying tools. And this is the walkthrough step-by-step. -step. Now, like I always say, if you have any questions about the carpet and flooring industry, go ahead and drop those down below. I'll try and create a follow-up video answering your questions for you.